Oh, it's making me confused now. Search for octocore. Oh, that's my research I did when I was looking for the figuring out what processor. I did know from articles that it would run on that motherboard, but some people said it was just great. Uh, they just had to do some searching to find. The problem is they're all running Windows, and they said, oh, I had to find the Windows drivers. And, uh, but it, worked, it got it working. Some of them said they never could get the Ethernet working. And I was hoping that the, you know, the stock drivers that come with you know, open source drivers would just work because I, I had it already working in that uh, in the ASRock motherboard with a dual the dual core processor out of that e machines I already had all that working I had you know I had gigabit ethernet I knew it would work but I tried for a month or two to find some way to get it to work and I couldn't get it to work I don't understand how come I don't have a Maybe I don't have a processor. Maybe it's just... Eh, I don't have a processor's folder. Well, there it is. Computer processor CPU. Now what? Why is it... Oh, I just made that recently. That's why. Still, I haven't reorganized them, you know, by alphabetical order in a while. So that's kind of cool. Uh, 1458. I'll put if it's something that's a good price, I'll go ahead and just put that in there, just so I'll know that. Uh, I think it's used. Is that new? Yeah, used very good. Oh, the, and then for, oh, that's a different one. That's an i3-10100, 100, yeah. But uh, now I'm hurting my neck because I scooted up to reach my keyboard. I guess I should have just used it. This is what I've been doing. I better do it. it it's, my, it's comfortable that way, this way. Let's pull my mouse and everything all the way back to the end of the desk. And, uh, and I almost, I always sit with this pillow because my neck always starts hurting pretty quick. It always does because to see my regular monitor, I have to look down and get my head off the pillow. But with that TV up there, that's exactly my viewing level if I was relaxed and leaning back. I even have a footstool there. Oh, yeah, but then it gets to be, if you don't get everything set up just right, then the pillow falls 50 times while you're trying to get set up and get comfortable. I'm not used to this keyboard, and I'm not used to, uh, I only use it when I need to, you know, I need a wireless keyboard. Uh, it's laid out pretty normal, but it's not exactly the same as a regular keyboard. But it's way better than the other. We got a, this is a Logitech. We got another one that I got from my mom, and she loves it. But I can't type on that thing to save my life. Everything's in the wrong place. All right. So what I was trying to do in here was I wanted to find. Oops. Oops. I think it's 5800. Yeah, E5800. Not yeah. There. Yeah, 3.20 gigahertz. That's pretty cool. You don't see a lot of them. It's performance, but they're comparing them to AMD Raisin 9 3900X. I mean, any Raisin's going to blow away a dual core of any kind. Then a 7. That's just relative to top 10 common CPUs. Doesn't mean anything. You need to compare them to the same... same uh, Type socket 775 era, you know, it doesn't have to be a socket 775, but and here it is again. Uh, CPU value mark, pro yeah, I'd say it's if you can get a 
get one for four fifteen dollars. They're saying it's ninety seven dollars. I wouldn't pay it. I'd get a used one. <laughs> I never have actually bought a used. I always get you know free ones in machines people give me. Even if, usually I don't take them out and put them in other machines, but it, unless you know something like the lightning hit them and they're damaged and you know stuff like that where the CPU and the memory still works but the motherboard's bad. Uh, but yeah, it's on the top of the value mark there, and they're they're still putting it on. Uh, they're it's in with the raisins and all that crap. I sevens, I nine. This is stupid. One I haven't. This is just the dumbest comparison I've ever seen. I mean, at least uh, like there's some uh, some benchmark apps that I use in Linux, and uh, they try to find as close to that type of processor is 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 they can. In the pro, it's a program. You're not looking on a web page, you know. And they compare it, and and the the numbers are still arbitrary. They, they don't really mean anything to me. I don't. Uh, and sometimes you got to really pay attention because sometimes a lower number means it's better, and sometimes a higher number means it's better. There's two two or three different programs they use. You got to make sure you know which program you're in. But it's actually way better than. Uh, well, you have to run it on. You have to have the machine running and run it on the machine, and it actually tests it. You know. Of course, you've probably seen them, even if you know if you even if you're not into Linux. There's plenty of Windows ones. Morton does that all the time. He's always swapping CPUs, like uh, and testing them, testing the graphics. You know, a lot of them. You know, they have the graphics built in. I actually, I always hit Control and open it up in a new window because I don't want to lose my place and I missed it. I hit Shift, I think, and it's not going back. I hate that. Oh, oh, I hit shift and it made it open up in a new window altogether. That's what happened. Right. I knew that. So that's fine. Okay, let's see if this is any good. All I want to know is how does it compare to some like CPUs? This is CPU world. It's good. It, it tells you everything about it, but it doesn't. I, don't, I think they have some pages with comparisons with them. Usually the page that comes up first in the search is just the detailed specs. This is one. Of, this is my one of my favorite ones to find them because you know sometimes there's some variations, similar numbers, uh, and you need to know like well, like this one is an E5800. Some of them have a little letter on the end or something, and you need to know that. You may not have the one you think you have. You know, you got to pay attention. That socket 775, I believe, is the same socket as my old Pentium 4. I think those are, they're a socket 775. So that was uh, I guess probably the tail end of the use of the socket 775. We're going to a dual core. Price chart. I can't. I think they usually have some comparisons too. But yeah, I'm not seeing any other anything but 3.2 gigahertz. So I don't think there's a gotcha there on that. Like you need to know some more closer identification numbers or anything or letters. Yeah, this has got every little detail, and of course, 90 percent of this, eighty percent of it, I don't know. I don't know what it means. You know, I, I've never gotten into it that much. Okay, CPUs related. There we go. See, these are all in close as you know, two point four to three point six gigahertz. You know, and they're all they're all Pentiums. Uh, all sixty five watt. And I don't think they're putting them in an order of rating here. They're just saying these are related. They're all dual cores. Uh, other family Celerons. Yeah, they're not. These aren't ratings. These are just telling you these are similar. And the, but they're well. There's two gigahertz all the way up to three point two. 
Now look, there's a core two. Oh, that's a core two extreme. 3.2 gigahertz has 12 me megabyte L2 cache. This one, where is it? <laughs> I usually search they like that, but sometimes I miss some of the things I'm interested in because it'll jump on by it. That's why I was just paging on down. Or sometimes there's too many entries and I get started hitting them all. Whoops, I went too fast. Go back. You probably can't even see this. There it is. So it's 3.2 and it's got two megabyte of L2 cache. I, I was when I saw that I was like I don't think that's a lot, you know. Uh, yeah, see these uh, even the, the I don't know why the uh, oh Core 2 micro architecture. Huh? No, what, oh Celeron. Okay, these Celerons have a lot more cache. That's funny. I didn't know they ever had Celerons with a lot of cache like that. Everything used to be 512 kilobyte, and then it finally got up in the megabytes. And but the most I've really remember, I, the most I don't look every time at that, but it just popped out to me. Uh, 12 megabytes of L2 cache of that same era of a of a uh, Celeron. <laughs> That's the most, all the other ones. Every one of the other similar ones are the first one's one, and the rest are all two, just like the one I'm looking at. So. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, so there's not any comparisons. I There may be a comparison. Maybe I'll try looking for the word comparison or something. I know they have some on there, on this site somewhere. Comparisons. There we go. Popular Pentium comparisons. E5800 oh, versus... It's one by one. I don't really want to go look at all that. I was kind of hoping to see that just a nice chart with a few of them, you know, five to ten of them. Uh, they, I do find stuff like that. Uh, the other day I did. I was looking up those laptops because I had no clue. They, I mean, they don't give you any hint as to what they are. And this doesn't either. E5800, it's not a 5800 megahertz, you know. Like like it's not numbered like a penny uh, AMD. You could always tell the frequency by the number, you know, with the AMD. Or you used to could. I don't think, I don't know if you can now with these newer ones. I haven't paid attention uh, since, a after the FXs, the, that's what that uh, 8300 is, just an 8300 FX. I just, well, I was just getting into servers and I just quit paying attention. Then I started kind of learning what's the doggy and what's the decent and what's the fast processors for servers, you know. And you're looking at a whole different thing. You're looking at four cores, eight cores, 12 cores, you know, six, eight, 12 cores. Eight and 12 does not. Martin's, I think he had one or two that were like that, but they were pretty old ones because they get really expensive. He'll buy processors and new or used and, and try them out. He'll do it, but he won't spend a fortune. He's thrifty like me. That's right. We're not cheap. We're thrifty. CPU upgrade. Now, I don't remember. If, I remember the site from the other day, but I don't remember if it's, I liked it or not. What do you do now? Sometimes when I do that, it actually changes the size of the text instead of opening it up. Oh, I think it made it smaller. Nope, that's too big. Maybe it made it a little bit bigger. I don't know, but it jumped. Active, and now I don't know where I am. There it is, CPU upgrade. It's just this... Well, it happens to me on my good key, my keyboard I like, too, but... Um, and that was pretty good. Sometimes I get it too big and I can't hardly read it. <laughs> Here's similar to... Now these look similar. Yeah. Xeon. I think that's what my processors and my server are. I think they might be Xeon processors. But they're Intel, so they're... Completely compatible with Intel-based uh, software, you know. But this is just telling the upgrade chance. Oh, how 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 likely you are to find an upgrade that'll fit your socket? I guess is what they're saying. Or you know, maybe you've got the the best one <laughs> already of that class, you know. Here it is. This is not available. Upgrade chance not available. Yep, 
That's what that line says. How funny. I mean, if the socket's 775, you could, should be able to put uh, any any motherboard that supports socket 70, 75 and supports a dual core. Well, I mean, if it's got like, it needs to be able to handle, like if you, if your motherboard doesn't have, I can't remember all the different things, but it needs to be new enough, enough new enough according to that processor you have. If it's really old compared to that processor, but it's still that socket, and it supports a dual core, but if it doesn't have the matching stuff, I can't even say what it is because I can't remember. Uh, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't get any. You wouldn't get maybe nothing out of it. Got putting the other processor in there. It might actually run worse even. Um, so you got to pay attention to your. You know, your motherboard needs to not just have the same socket, but it needs to have. Uh, uh, I can think of words like front side bus and all that stuff. Yeah, I don't remember. I used to kind of pay attention to that a little bit back in the Pentium days. Because you kind of needed to to know if if what you were buying was going to be any better than what you already got, you know. But uh, I, Well, I've only bought one. Let's see, I bought that. I don't buy brand new stuff very often. I got to where, you know, I, I do software work for people and hardware, you know, figure out that they're, I'd figure out what was wrong with it, you know, the power supply or whatever. And not, uh, mostly Jeff, but a couple other friends. And, uh, and then they would come back later and give me, give me computers that they got, mostly Jeff. But I've got, I had like three different guys I knew that would give me, well, maybe two. Oh yeah, three. One one my, one friend gave me a couple. He found some. He he was at the Washeteria one day. He doesn't like computers. He doesn't know how to use them. And there was two laptops and some other stuff in a box. And said, "Here, take it. It's free." And they were okay. Uh, one was an Acer two gigahertz Intel dual core. And the other one it, was, it had a bad screen. That's one I was talking about earlier. I used for a server for a while. And the other one my mom's using this her computer right now. It's a dual core two gigahertz. Uh, it's a Dell. Uh, 15 something, Dell 1500 something, and uh, um, I mean it's it's. I just put it in there for her to use while I was upgrading her system, and she's still using it. And I haven't got it done, and but it, it's really it's a big deal for me because. Can't hardly really see good anymore, and I've got to get that. You know, I've got to get it all out and read all the paperwork to make sure that I get all the wiring in the box, make it fit, make it go in the right places on the, that that motherboard, that uh, Zeus motherboard. I've never done on the Zeus. <coughs> so, uh, but as long as it has good charts, it, you know, I can do it. But then I set up the software and all that. But mostly, I just don't uh, haven't felt like doing it physically. You know. And well, my brain don't always work straight. Uh, all right, now I'm I'm getting I'm tired and I'm kind of going in circles, but that's nothing compared to how I get when I don't feel good. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm I am so tired. I'm just forgetting what the heck I'm doing. So anyway, that is a surprise, and that's actually a good surprise. I was pretty well figuring, at looking at that box and, and the shape it was in, I thought, well, that's pretty new. That's going to be a full quad core, I'll bet you. That was the reason I brought it in. And uh, it's really kind of funny. It's a dual core with 4 gig of RAM. I've really never seen a dual core. I mean, that was a high-end box. They paid a lot of money for a dual core with 4 gig of RAM back in those days. Uh, and a 500 gigabyte hard drive. That was pretty big. Uh, I'm beginning to gather that it's probably about 10 years old, about the same age as my server. My server's 11 years old, uh, I think. No, it was built. No, it was it was built in 2011. It's not. It's just about eight years old. 11, 12, or nine years old. I can't count. Well, I can't. No, I really can't count. Can I? 2011. 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 5, 6, 7, 8. I was right to start with. Okay. Eight years old. Or one of those times I was right. This one here, I would 
I bet you somewhere on here there's a year date, and I just haven't seen it. And some of the look really fine print. Oh, there it is. 2011-02-16. Product certified in Shanghai, China. Made in China, R43. Chinese letters. Manufacturing date, 2011-02-16-2011. It's putting backwards. They always do it backwards on, on a lot of stuff. The way we do it, the way I do it. In America, people just kind of do it the way they want, whatever way they like it. I like to put uh, like 9856, you know, um, that, you know, month, day, year. That's the way I, that's the way they, they really taught us in school growing up in my, in my generation. They did always say, well, if you want to do it this other way, you can, but most people do it that way. And I liked it and got used to it, and I still do it. And so when it's turned around, I always forget which one is the month and which one is the day. When they do the year, I don't know how they do it. I don't know. I, I can Once I look at it, 2011, okay, you can figure it out because 2011-02-16. So you know there's not 16 months in a year. So I have to sit there and do, you know, figure it out. Um, so you know it's going to be second month, 16th day. So I hate having to do that because if it's, uh, you know, if it's the other way around, uh, day, uh, month, day, year, some people do day, month, year, but month, day, year is the, the way that clicks in my brain and works. Okay, so that's really interesting. If I had another machine with, that, what was it, 180 watt or 160 watt power supply, I know I have some big, I mean, all those older machines, they most of them, uh, the Pentiums and the Celerons too. You know, they had Celerons usually had three, three, usually around 300 watts, sometimes 350 watt power supplies. Pentiums had uh, minimum 350, or they wouldn't run with anything else in them. And usually they were 400. You know, usually they were around 400, maybe 450. And everybody would always buy a five, 500, 550, 650. I got a 650 in Mom's box. I used to have a 400, and it went bad. It was the only thing that went bad out of that stuff in that box. Uh, that It was AMD dual core. Uh, it was the only thing that went bad. And power supplies are the one thing that generally always do go bad first. I used to didn't realize that that they could run, but just get worse and worse and worse and take several years to do it. And you think that your software is bad, you got viruses, you know, and you clean it, but you can't find any. And it's starting to, and when it finally gets to its last legs, you realize. That's a hardware problem. Um, now, I never, I, you, there are, you, I don't see them much, I don't look, but uh, there were, uh, hard, uh, there were hardware testers. There were, there were PCI cards you could buy, plug them into a machine, and they could test the motherboard. They could test the power supply. Uh, I think they mostly tested the motherboard for those. They weren't real expensive. There were some other testers that were, you know, four or $500 or more. That used to be on Tiger Direct that I always wanted when I first started getting into trying to learn to do hard work on hardware. I never did get one. I just kind of learned by, you know, just like you do with your old car. You just get to know her really good. And once she starts missing or sniffing or hesitating, you, you just, you've, you've already been with her all that time. And so you know a good, pretty well where to go look, you know. And then you find out, oh, you were wrong and you had to go look somewhere else. But you usually figure it out. Until they came out with computers and cars. And then it could be 150 different things causing that look the same way in the computer. You look at those computer codes. Well, it could be this or this or this or this or this or this. And it usually ends up being a ground or a sensor. The people usually never realize that those computers and cars go nuts when you got a bad ground. And it could be anywhere on that whole freaking frame motor inside the cabin of your vehicle. The bad grounds will throw you more heartaches and you'll go round and around and around. And it goes for old vehicles too. I always 